the f Yo, I swear this freaking garage is haunted. Do you see this? Oh my God. What do I do? I'm gonna turn the lights off. Like, I don't know what to do. Yo, it's straight up bugging. Okay, I'm just gonna have to keep going. Like, I just hope it doesn't... You guys can see it in the video though, like. All right, it stopped. It's Aria Artistry here and today we're gonna be talking about brush tools and all the other tools that I use to achieve this look right here So I asked you guys on Instagram and someone recommended uh, I'm gonna put up the clip right here because I'm not sure who told me to do this But they told me to do a brush video and I'm like, oh my god I don't have any videos on brushes specifically. So here we are. So yeah, the video is a little bit long, so I would definitely recommend that you get a pen and paper because I really go in depth about the brushes, what it's for, how I use it, and all that good stuff. Before I get into the video, please subscribe to my channel, be a part of my mermaid squad, and don't forget to put your notification bell on so you know whenever I post a new video. And if you do like videos like this, give it a thumbs up so I know so I can keep creating this content for you guys. And comment down below what you want me to do next. I don't know, I'm running out of ideas and um, you guys seem to come up with really good ideas. So just comment down below what you want to see next on my channel. And yeah, without further ado, if you want to see how to get this look using these tools, <laughs> keep watching. All right guys, let's get it poppin'. So I asked you guys what you wanted to see video wise on my channel and I got one really, really good recommendation is brushes and like applicators and tools that I use to create a beat face. So today that's what we're gonna be doing. So I'm not gonna really be showing you like products that I'm using. I will of course have it listed down below so you guys can check that out. But this is more about like the tools I use to create the looks that I do. First things first, a really, really amazing tool is a mirror. So this is just like a mirror from like, I don't know, Burlington, TJ Maxx, one of those. But in my house, I have a really good mirror. It's actually a lit up mirror and it can be turned like 360. I did show it in like one of my videos, like back in the day, I don't even, I don't even remember which one. But um, yeah, I'll definitely list that down below. It's on Amazon, it's 40 bucks, which is really good because these mirrors out here are hella expensive for no damn reason. This one is just my filming mirror, so I'll definitely link that, but a mirror is key, especially one with lights, so you can kind of see like everything you're doing and it looks good. Um, you know, when you walk outside the house. <laughs> I definitely recommend too is natural lighting so you can see how you look outside because indoor lighting and outdoor lighting are totally different and outdoor lighting will play you hard. <laughs> so definitely try to, if you don't have a vanity, try to like do your makeup where a window is with that lit mirror, I think it'll be great. So the first thing I like to do with my brows is brush them out. So I have this spoolie right here and then I have it attached to this like little angled brush. So I think this is great because it's a two in one so you don't have to worry about using two different brushes. So I just brush them out. Um, I did used to use the angled side when I did powder but now I use a pencil so it's not necessary for me. But everything is gonna be cruelty free that I'm using because I told you guys gonna be cruelty free. And if you wanna see how I do my brows you can check out my last makeup tutorial because I do do them in that video, the um, Melt Cosmetics one. Another brush that I really like for my brows is this small guy right here. This is a tiny little concealer brush. Um, I'm gonna link it down below because I think Travis got me this for Christmas and I think he got it off of Amazon. So it's just really nice and tiny so it can really like carve right underneath your brow. And let me tell you something, you don't have to spend a crap ton of money on good brushes because there's really good inexpensive brushes out there. To start, I would get like just the basics. 
I'm gonna tell you what brands I really, really like at the end and everything. So to blend out my concealer, I've been using this e.l.f. brush. This is the eyeshadow C brush. This thing is like two bucks. So I really like the e.l.f. brushes. Um, don't get the white ones. I think they actually discontinued them. But those white ones, they broke on me. It's terrible. I've actually had this brush for like like five or six years. So they do last you if you um, take care of them really well. But I just like to use this like right under here just to blend it out and make sure there's no harsh lines. Um, but I think it's for like right in here. But I just think this is too dense for that. See how it just blends it out so nicely? All right, so those are the three brushes that I use for my brows. So I just um, primed my eyes and then blended it out with my finger. So the first brush that I use for eyeshadow is a Crown C511 brush. And it's this really nice fluffy brush right here. I like it because it's not too fluffy and it's not too like loose. It's a little, a little dense and it's nice and tapered. But you see how it kind of like goes up into like, not like a teardrop, but it's just not, it's like oval shapes, you get it? So I just like to use this right in the crease and I actually like to pat it right in there because it fits right in my crease. And then once I pop the color on, I can just blend it out like that in the windshield wiper motions to make sure it's blended. But I really recommend crown brushes because they're really inexpensive and they're just bomb. Like I've been, I've had this brush too for like five years for a really long time. Um, I really do take care of my brushes too so I don't have to keep repurchasing them. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a natural look so you guys aren't really distracted. I'll obviously make another video if you want it but I just want you guys to really be focusing on the brushes and not the actual eyeshadow look. So I just like to pack the shadow right onto the brush as much as I can and then like just tap it off a little bit so there's no excess and then just tap it right here, right in the outer V. See how it just applies so much of the color and it makes it so much more pigmented rather than like that. You see the difference? So this brush can just really fit right into the outer V and then I just bring it up into the crease with that same tapping motion. And then I just use the tip of it to blend out the top of the eyeshadow right by the brow. And then I just keep building up until I think the color is on enough. Oh my God. Remember when I said this is gonna be a natural look? So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a natural look. This is not natural at all. <laughs> That's usually what happens. So now that our crease color is on, we're gonna go in with the lid shade. So I love to use this Crown Oval Fluff brush. It's similar to the concealer brush. It's just a little bit bigger, but I really like this because it just really fits right onto the lid. And then if you want, you can like cut the crease instead of doing like the whole concealer thing. But there are different versions of a uh, eyeshadow brush. There is one that's like this, but it's white and a little bit more fluffy. This one is a little more dense. So the density packs on the color a little bit more. And then the more loose the brush is, the more diffused the eyeshadow will be. So I did the same thing with the fluffy brush. I put it on the bed of the brush. And now we're just gonna sweep it right onto the lid. Now I'm going up here and I'm using like the tip of the brush, like up here. And I'm just gonna cut the crease, cut the crease <laughs> without using concealer. So remember, use the tip of the brush to kind of diffuse it out and then the bed of the brush to apply the product. So I'm gonna go back into the crease and just kind of like hide this a little bit, add a little more definition. So I'm gonna be using the same brush and I'm gonna show you guys a really cool um, tool that I got off of Amazon. So it's this little like brush cleaner thing. It just helps you like switch colors. So if you don't wanna use this color anymore, take this and then go in a circle and your shadow should be off. So here, let's test it on my hand, see? So no more of that other color that I first use is on my hand. Um, this is a really good tool if you're traveling and you don't wanna bring too many brushes, you can just use this guy. Loki should have brought another palette out here because there's not a lot of neutral colors. I chose the most colorful palette. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna go back in with that other shade because there's no other darker colors in this palette. I don't know why I brought this out here <laughs> to use as an example, but it's fine. So I just dipped into that same color with that C511 brush. All right, so now for liner. So I'm gonna show you guys um, with a gel liner, just in case you don't wanna use like a liquid liner. So I know gel liners are hard to find, so this is a ColourPop liner. 
I actually really like their liners. They're really nice. Just make sure you close them because they do dry out pretty quick. So I'm actually going to use the same brush we used for our eyebrows. Um, I actually didn't use this brush, but if you want to like change the color, you can just use this guy. The brush that I did use to use was MAC, but they're not cruelty free. So I'm going to just try this guy out. So I'm just going to dip it right into the gel liner and draw a line. You guys know I don't do wings because of my eye shape. So we're just going to put it really close to our lash line. I like this. It's nice and thin too, like it's not too thick because the other one I brought out here is from Urban Decay and she real thick. I can't, like this is more for eyebrows. You see how thick the black one is compared to like the Amazon one? So she too thick. We are not trying to put that on our eyes. I've never used this for eyeliner before, so definitely gonna use that for that since I don't use eyebrow powder. So I'm gonna do some lashes. Cause you guys know I need to have lashes on. I can't not just do lashes. But another tool that I like to use, it's not a brush, it's um, eyelash glue. If you're allergic to latex, Tarte does have a really good one that's latex free. And they are also cruelty free. So I'm just gonna pop on these lashes really quick and then I will be right back. And I do wanna show you the tool that I use to apply my lashes. It's just a regular tweezer. So that's all I use. And I literally just take the lash, I pop it on with my finger and then I'll start to use the tweezers to really get in there since I can't use my fingers and then your lashes on. All right, so lashes are on. Um, I wanted to share another brush that I really like with you guys. It's a Morphe M562. So this little brush is so freaking cute. Look how small it is. But it's really, really nice and fluffy. So if you really need to get in there and you know, some last minute blending. You can really get in there and just blend it out. I love how it just fits right here. It's really, really nice. So now we're gonna go on to foundation. For my primer, I like to use my hands, so it's not really a tool right there. I'm just gonna pop this on really quick. I guess it, your hands are a tool too. So if you guys are a part of my mermaid squad, you guys know I love to use my little corrector. So I actually was using an It Cosmetics brush. Um, since that's not cruelty free, I'm gonna be switching to another brush. I gotta figure it out because I didn't bring too many brushes out here. Um, so this is um, a nice fluffy brush, but I do, I'm gonna show you the brush just to show you what I recommend for blending out like corrector or anything. So you see how nice, big and fluffy this is. So I like to like, as you can see the red, I like to use like the bed of the brush like I do with my eyeshadow. So it just fits right here. So I'm gonna find like a cruelty free version of this so you guys can get that if you like it. But right now I'm just gonna use this little Sephora dinky brush <laughs> that I've had for like, since I first started using makeup. It's like so old. But I'm just gonna use that just for the purpose of the cruelty free video. Wait, is Sephora cruelty free? Sephora collection? Hold up before I continue using this. I didn't even think of that. Well, I can't check cause I have no service out here. So if this isn't cruelty free, I'm really sorry. I honestly didn't even think to look about Sephora collection. Oh my God. So the Sephora collection is cruelty free. I got service real quick. So now that that's nice and blended, I'm actually gonna use that concealer brush again, the small one we used for our eyebrows. So since I like to use two different foundations, I need to mix them because I don't know, I can't find my correct shade ever. <laughs> so I'm just gonna mix it with this little brush we use for our eyebrows. And I have my little Petri dish right here, which is very, very clutch because if you put foundation on your hand or anything, and I mean, obviously not right now since we're in quarantine, but if you go out, you'll have like foundation on your hand if you forget about it. So this just kind of helps you be clean. So yeah, this is like necessary to me if you want to like have a clean hand because I always, always forget. I'm just gonna put it on cause waste not, want not. And then I'm gonna use a beauty blender, which is cruelty free. I looked that up. So I love beauty blenders because it just blends out your foundation so nicely, nice and airbrushed. Um, I will recommend definitely wetting it because if you just use a dry beauty blender, it's just not gonna, it's not gonna give you that effect and it's kinda just soak up all your foundation, which it does, but I found, I know it's kinda gross, judge me if you want, but I found if you use like a beauty blender that already has foundation like in there from the last time you did makeup, it doesn't soak up as much. 
So I like to use the big one and I like to use the smaller one for concealer. Some people have a love-hate relationship with the smaller one, but I actually like it. All right, so mine are nice and wet. So yours might look a little bit bigger. I'm just using a cup because I'm out in my garage, but definitely run it underwater and then while the water is running, squeeze it. So I'm just gonna take my little Petri dish and then I like to use the butt of the beauty blender and then put it all over my face. And don't forget your neck. If you forget your neck, it just shows that you look like two different colors, especially if you like tan or whatever. So make sure you get your neck so it all looks like one. So now, I personally like to cream contour. So I'm going to be, wow, I almost told you what I was going to be using. <laughs> so I'm just going to use like my contour stick. So I actually have two of these guys. This is my favorite brush. This is a setting brush by Real Techniques and they are really affordable. I really like their brushes. And this is nice and fluffy, so it blends out really, really nice. Um, you can use this for setting under your eye as well. I just like to use it for cream contour because look, it just blends out so nicely. Anything with a duo fiber is going to apply a little bit less. If it's not a duo fiber and it's nice and dense, it's gonna apply a lot more. It's very similar to the eyeshadow brushes I was telling you guys about. The same rule applies to like foundation. It's just a bigger brush. So now for concealer. I just use my little beauty blender because the concealer I use already has like a little applicator and I like to use a separate one from my foundation because I like to use a lighter concealer. So I don't want to mix the two because it's going to defeat the purpose of the lightness, you know? I could use the top of it, but I feel like it's too big for me. The top of the big beauty blender. So under our eyes, I'm actually going to use the other Real Technique brush that I have. This is an older one, but it's still just as good. So I'm gonna be taking, um, I didn't know if the Ben Nye powder that I've been using a lot is cruelty free. So I brought this Urban Decay one out here. So I just like to take the Beauty Blender, make sure there's no creasing, and then go in with that Real Technique brush with the powder on it and then just set it. And that just helps with creasing so it doesn't crease on you. Cause you don't wanna set the creasing, you know? And I'm just gonna set everywhere else that I put the concealer. So for powder, you really want like a fluffy brush. You don't want anything too dense because it's gonna pack the powder on there unless you wanna bake, which a lot of people like to use beauty blenders for baking. I personally don't bake because I've tried every which way. It still looks really dry under my under eyes, so I'm not about that life. So I feel like a brush really helps me out and it stays just as well and I'm oily as well, so it stays for me. But now we're gonna move on to bronzer. And everyone always asks me about these brushes. These brushes are so bomb and it's from Be Small and they're from Amazon. Travis actually got me these like two Christmases ago and I freaking love them because they're nice duo fiber brushes so it doesn't apply too much product. Yeah, they're really nice and soft. They're really inexpensive and I definitely, definitely recommend them. But I, I really like this because it's angled so it really just fits into my contour like that. And it comes in like a set of like six or five, I think. So I also got this little guy. It's literally the same brush, but smaller. And I just use that for my nose. So the same brush in that little set, the Be Small set, there is a round brush and this is called Face Round. So this is literally the same thing. It's just round. And this is a lot more dense than the other one. See how this one is a lot less fluffy than this one? So I like to use this for face powder, which I don't have right now since I was using MAC. So I'm just gonna use a clear setting powder by Urban. And I want this to be more dense because I have a lot of acne scars when I do have like face powder. It just really covers it up really nicely. And I like to tap like this. You could go back and forth, but since it is so dense, you don't want to take off what you put on. So I like to use the tapping motion like I do with the Beauty Blender. Okay, so this is the one cruelty-free thing that I have to use because I don't have any cruelty-free blushes. But for my blush, I actually use this Becca angled highlighting brush. This brush is pretty pricey, but I love it because it's nice and fluffy and it really has a nice placement on your cheek. It is for highlighter, but sometimes it is a little too intense for me. So I love this brush for blush. I almost messed it up. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you guys. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but I'm sorry that this is not a cruelty-free product. I do need to get some blushes that are cruelty-free. I don't know what's wrong with me. See how it just fits right nice onto your cheek? And then I just push it back into the bronzer. So for highlight, I like to use this Morphe M510 brush. I know it's a little weird because it's like really fluffy, but I like it because 
you just apply it right on your cheekbone and if you want to apply more you can it doesn't apply it too intensely especially with this blinding highlights we have out here nowadays i like how this one oh my god see it still applied it pretty blindingly but at least it's not over the top like i feel like i'm going to show you the difference actually between this and that becca one so you see how like intense the becca highlight one is compared to the morphe one I mean, this highlighter is pretty blinding anyway. All right, so our face is done. So now we're gonna do underneath our eyes. I got another question um, asking me why I do my eyes, then my face, then underneath my eyes. So I like to conceal and, you know, powder and stuff before I put my eyeshadow underneath there. Um, and then since I'm already on the face, I kind of just finish the face off anyway. So that's how I work. Um, everybody works a little bit differently but that's been working for me for years. So now I'm gonna go underneath my eyes with the Crown C528. And this brush is so bomb, especially for like right underneath your eye right here. And then if you want to intensify your crease, it fits right in here. So if you want to, you know, add a little bit more detail, more depth, you could just put it like right here. It's so freaking bomb. It's so little, I love it. But I like to use it underneath my eyes because I have like a crease right here. So I just like to fill it in with eyeshadow. And this brush, like, look how, look at that. It just packs it on so nicely. And the tip of the brush is really good for blending out, like to diffuse the bottom part. So it doesn't look like you just like stuck eyeshadow down there. I need to get out of here. I'm hearing like footsteps. Like I know this garage is old, but like, and then the lights were flickering. Do you see this? I don't know, I just have to hurry up because I do not feel comfortable in here right now. So now we're gonna use this pointer brush right here. This is a Crown C513. But I love this because you could just like stick it right here. You could stick it under here. It's just really good for inner corner and then like pushing it out into the rest of the eyeshadow. All right, so now that we're done with the eyes, I'm gonna go in with mascara. So I found out that my favorite mascara, the Giorgio Armani mascara that I always use is not cruelty free. So, of course, I didn't bring the cruelty-free one out here because, you know, it just wouldn't be an Aria Archery video if I did everything right. So, I'm just going to do my mascara off camera and then I'll be right back um, to show you my lips. All right, so I just put my um, lash primer on, which is cruelty-free. So, now we're going to move on to lips. So, I don't really use any lip tools. I'm going to show you... I'm like out of breath because I'm like terrified of like, I don't know what's going on here right now, but don't mind me, I'm all over the place. So I'm gonna show you a tool for your lips that you can use. Um, I don't really use this tool unless I'm like really, really running out of lipstick or I don't have a liner or anything. So this is the C416 Mini Sable Lip. So it's just this mini lip brush. So it's really good to, you know, outline your lips if you don't have a, a lip liner or if you're running really low on your lipstick and you still want to use it. So we're going to say like, oh my God, I like ran out of my lipstick. So I'm just going to dip it in there and use it like that. Okay, that's not really doing anything. But you guys get the point. So <laughs> that's what you do. You just kind of put it on like that. But since this is so nude, it's probably not going to go on. So you could see, so I'm just gonna pop this on really quick. All right, so there are some other brushes I do want to show you guys. So if you want like a loose fluffy powder, uh, Urban has a really good one. So this is a nice big fluffy brush so you can kind of just dust all over. Um, it's nice and it's like tapered and it, it is a little bit dense, but not too much. So you can like have some movement. Another good brush to smudge out like eyeliner if you want to have like a smudge out eyeliner look on top or if you want to smudge it on the bottom is this little smudger right here. Crown does have a cruelty free version of this. So I will list that down below. It's literally the same thing, but this is so nice and dense. So you can like really get under there and really smudge it out. And a little trick is if you ever get like clumpy mascara, you can always use your spoolie and just go underneath it and brush it out. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to clean your brushes. So I typically tell people, try to clean your brushes at least three or four times a week. Like you don't have to do it every single day because I know life is busy, but don't wait until it's like a month or two months because it carries bacteria and then that's how you break out and that's not good. So I'm gonna show you what brush cleaner I use. So I love to use this brush cleaner. It's so freaking bomb. I'm just seeing if it's cruelty free. There was a girl saying that she was trying to see 
if it is cruelty free and she couldn't find it anywhere. I don't know why they don't put it on their website. I can't say this is or isn't cruelty free. I can't find it. I tried to do my research, but if it isn't, I'm really sorry. Um, but I really do love this brush cleaner. It's really good because it disinfects and it cleans and it smells like citrus. It's really, really bomb. So to deep clean my brushes, I actually got this a long time ago at the makeup show. They have like a little kit like this that comes together. So all you have to do is put your brush cleaner in here. So all you're gonna do, it's like hard to, here, let me, hold on. <laughs> okay, so I know this looks crazy, but this is like my little setup, what I usually do. I had to clean so it didn't look too crazy. But you take your brush cleaner, and you just kind of dunk it in there. And it comes with a twisty, but when I got it in the kit together, it did come with this guy, so it's a little bit easier to dunk out the brush cleaner. So now I'm gonna take a brush, and this little grid right here, this cleans your brushes. So you wanna keep that in there, and then you literally just take it, and then you twirl around. And your brush is clean in like five seconds. Look at that. So now I just take like a paper towel and I just get the excess off. And look, your brush is already clean. It took like two seconds. So that's how I clean my brush with this guy. So I want to show you how I clean my brush without this guy. This could be for like deep cleaning. And then this could be for like daily cleaning. So I just literally squirt like a little bit. I really like a spray bottle so the brush cleaner doesn't get soaked up in here. And then I just go around in circles. And look, it's already clean. Like this brush cleaner is so good. And I like that it disinfects it as well, not only just cleans it. So yeah, that's how I clean my brushes. I hope that that helps you a little bit and it's a little bit easier for you to clean your brushes. I definitely recommend um, a rag and not a paper towel. I just had this on hand because a rag you can wash, it's reusable, paper towel, is not. <laughs> All right, so that is everything that I use to do my makeup, the tools, the tricks, the tips, all that good stuff. So I hope this helped you out in doing your makeup. Um, like I said, you don't need to have a lot of brushes or expensive brushes. I'm gonna list um, what I think you guys need from all of those brushes that I used. Definitely need an eyeliner, eyebrow, spoolie brush because it's gonna help you. It's a two-in-one product. For Eyeshadow, I literally only think you need three, three things, which is the a Crown C511, which I talked about, which is that fluffy um, eyeshadow brush that I used in the crease. I definitely think you need that for blending. You need a bigger brush. This is a Morphe M513. I didn't get to talk about this brush because I didn't get to use it, but it's just a bigger version of this guy right here. As you could see, the Morphe one is a lot more fluffier. So I think you need that for blending out anything that you need to blend out and then just an eyeshadow brush because you know, you gotta put your eyeshadow on somehow. <laughs> so I think these three are staples for doing eyeshadow and if you need to, you know, switch up the brushes, you can always use the brush thing that I have, the brush switcher. Another brush that I think you guys need is setting brush. This brush is so bomb. So this is the uh, Real Technique setting brush. So I think this is good for setting under your eyes, for going right under your contour to make it a lot more prominent, for blending out anything else on your face. I think this is definitely a staple to have. If you want a concealer brush, I would do something fluffy. So I showed this It Cosmetics one. I definitely will give a cruelty-free version of this down below. But I think this is really good to blend concealer out, especially if you already have like the applicator. But to apply it, I think you should get like a flat concealer brush like this one if you don't have like a little applicator. So if you do have an applicator, just this guy, but if you don't, then these two because you need something to apply your concealer with. I don't recommend your hands because it mixed with the oils that you have in your hand already and it kind of like messes up the makeup. It doesn't wear as well. So I definitely recommend brushes or a beauty blender, which I definitely recommend a beauty blender to give you that like flawless look. And you can honestly use this for everything. Like I said, even baking if you want to. So I recommend this one. The smaller one is optional. I like the smaller one because it really gets in underneath the eye, but you can literally just use this if you just squeeze it. So definitely just the one. Or a lot of people like the Real Techniques one, which is this, but it has like a flat side so you can apply the makeup. Or you can use the Morphe one. I personally don't like the Morphe one because it's like really hard when I used it. But if you want a cheaper version of this guy, because this is 20 bucks, 
um, I recommend the Real Techniques one, which is $6. Another brush I recommend for eyes is uh, the C528. And that's just if you want to go underneath your eye. You don't really need need this, but if you really want to like get under there, I definitely recommend this because it's so small and it just fits right underneath your eye as well as a pointer brush. I think everybody needs a pointer brush. And if you don't want this guy, you can always use the pointer brush. Just make sure when you put it underneath your eye, you take that fluffy brush and just blend it out. All right, I have three more brushes because I don't want to... I don't want you guys to get like a bunch of brushes because you really don't need all of the ones that I use. I just like to use a lot of brushes because I like to use it for different things as you saw. And I recommend this little set right here. It comes with, I only have these three with me, but I think it comes with five. And this set is so inexpensive. This is the B Small. So it has a round brush for powder foundation. It has an angled one for bronzer and it has a smaller one. If you want to contour your nose, you can use this. You can find other reasons to use this as well. I think it has like a tapered one um, that's like the pointer brush, but it's a little bit bigger. So you can use that for something else as well. But definitely recommend all three of these because you're going to use them, especially for if you have foundation powder and bronzer. And you can honestly use this guy for a uh, blush if you just do it really light handed. You could just put it right there. You don't need that Becca one that I was re recommending. So you could totally use this for blush as well and bronzer. And if you do want like a fluffier option, um, I will list down below. I believe Morphe has like one because this one is a little bit pricey. Um, but definitely do like a fluffy brush if you need it. Highlighting brush, um, this brush is really, really inexpensive. So if you really want a good highlighting brush, I def definitely recommend this one. This is a Morphe M510. So yeah, all the Morphe brushes are really inexpensive as well as the crown brushes. And the last tool that I recommend is Q-tips because you can use this to take anything off with, um, just have like makeup remover or something around. And then the brush cleaner, of course, you need brush cleaner. I don't have any other brushes that I would recommend. So let me count all these. So in, re in reality, they have sets. So you don't have to get all of these by itself, you know, 14. So if you can get a set of 15 brushes, I think you'll be good. But yeah, I think all of those 14 brushes will help you create an everyday, if you want every day, you can use less for that. But if you want something more bold, then that will, those are all the tools to create a bold eyeshadow look and face and all of that stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna list everything down below, like I said before, so you guys can cop it if you want it. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope this video helps you out. I hope it was informative. I hope you took notes because it's very long. Um, but yeah, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Be a part of my mermaid squad. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. <laughs>